In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how we can use raycasting to see if our enemy has line of sight. In the last video, we went to make sure that the, the player was in front of us. Now we want to make sure we have line of sight before we actually go ahead and fire that missile off. Or in this case, the laser. We want to make sure that we're not just shooting into an asteroid. So let's go ahead and we'll open up our enemy attack again. And we have our check for to see if he's in front. Let's see if we have one for line of sight. So again, I'm going to return a bool and I'm going to call it have line of sight. And of course, make sure we fix our typos. Now we already know what we're going to target because we can use this target up here. We are going to need a direction, a distance, which we'll get from the laser because I believe our laser has distance on it, right? Uh, max distance. Do we have a way to get that yet? We do, float this, all right. So let's just go ahead and start off with what we need. First, we're gonna need a ray cast hit, which everyone just seems to call hit. I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. We're actually gonna go ahead and use the debug.draw ray to actually show the ray before we draw it. And I'm gonna draw it from the laser. I'm just gonna have one laser on my enemy ship, at least on this one. If I end up going and adding more, I can come back in and change this from just being a one variable to an array. But for now, I just wanted one laser, which I will call laser. So debug dot draw ray, which works pretty much just like a line. The one we're gonna use is start, distance, and I guess color. I'm not gonna do duration. I'm gonna call it every frame anyway. Uh, we're not gonna do a depth test. So it looks like for me, number number two is the one I want. So the start is gonna be laser dot transform dot position. The direction is gonna be his position minus my position. And we could go ahead and make a separate variable for that. And we'll go ahead just to break things down a little bit easier for people. So vector three. And I'm going to say direction is equal to target dot position minus transform dot position. So his position minus ours will give us that direction. So now we can come here and say direction and let's give it a color. And do I have red? I don't think so. We might actually have to go ahead and disable the movement script because we don't want it moving around. There we go. And we need a place to call this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do it down here. Or up here. Uh, so we need a laser. I think that's about the only thing we need to add. So I've got my enemy ship. Oh, we got a typo. Uh, what was my typo? Oh, I need to return. Uh, I'm just gonna return false at the end here. And while that goes away, I'm going to go ahead and put my laser on. So I'm down to my prefabs. Laser. I'm going to drop my laser on him. Let's go ahead. We'll zero out the position. I'm going to move it forward. Just in front of him. It's good. Um, we don't have our laser script on it for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that. I'm going to go ahead and assign it. Or apply it back just so that uh, my prefab has that laser script attached to it. Well, these were actually spawned from it. Uh, hopefully, I didn't screw these up. We'll find out in a minute. I'll go ahead and shrink these down. I'm going to come in my player movement. I'm going to turn this off just because I don't want him chasing me around right now. And we'll go ahead and assign our laser. And when we hit play, we should get that little red beam. If we get the green one from uh, him being in front of us and of course that's actually being cast from the center of our body So there's the example of being cast from the tip of the laser or it's not the tip of the laser. It's the center of the actual lasers transform Versus the center of the actual enemy uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move this line at the end or I'll leave it to you switch it over to using the transform position of the laser instead but anyway We'll come in and keep going. And it's following me fine. 
I should be able to change altitudes. Yep, great. So let's turn that green one off just so it's not distracting and we only have the one to worry about. There we go. And of course, for those that are having a little bit of trouble figuring out how to switch it over, instead of using transform position, we're gonna go ahead and use laser dot transform position, but I'll leave that up to you. All right, so let's go ahead and start casting this ray. So I'm gonna say if physics dot ray cast, and I'm not gonna use a ray, we could use a ray, set one up. But I'm just gonna use the origin, which is laser dot transform dot position. Next, I'm gonna want that direction. So I'll say direction. Next, I want a place to store it. So out hit. And then finally, I'm going to need a distance. And I can get that from the laser dot, uh, I think it was just distance. Yeah, really should change that to something a little bit more descriptive, but anyway, that works. So great, now if I'm hitting it, uh, we wanna know what we're hitting. So I'm gonna say if hit dot transform dot compare tag, and the tag I wanna look for is the player tag. I wanna do something. And let's fix this up. Let's tab it back a bit. I'm just gonna say debug dot log. Actually, let's go ahead and just move that ray down here now. Uh, I'll comment it out. I'm gonna move this ray down here. So now we're only gonna see the ray when we're hitting the player. So let's go ahead, we'll stop it. We'll start the game back up. Come on. And nothing's happening. Let's check the tag on the player. Ah, he's untagged. We gotta make sure he's tagged. And I want him tagged as player. Uh, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and add that enemy tag. And after I've added it, I wanna go ahead and assign it to my enemy. All right, save scene, make sure it doesn't blow up. We'll go ahead, we'll start it up. And still not seeing it. Did I save it? Let's go check it out. Just a quick check here, we're hitting the player. We'll come back in. And the easiest way is to go debug.log. And let's just see what we're hitting. So hit dot, oh, did it wrong. Hit dot transform dot tag. We'll just go ahead and spit the tag out of what we're hitting. Uh, we'll save that off. We'll jump back in. Let it compile, start it back up. And we're hitting on tag. That's because we have this asteroid right in the way. Is that in the way last time too? I'm just gonna go ahead and move it out of the way. Uh, switches over to world. All right, so. We're hitting something, it's untagged. We don't know what it is, so let's go ahead and draw a ray to what we're hitting. Already yet, just, just draw that line. And we'll go to hit dot point for the exact point that we're hitting. Let's save this off. I think I already see the problem. I think it has to do with the direction I'm casting, but let's just go ahead, we'll jump in and take a look. It's always good to know how to debug your stuff. So go ahead, start it off. It's shooting. It actually is hitting me. Uh, let's open all this up. It, oh, all of me is not tagged as player. So it's hitting another collider that is not considered a player. Let's go ahead and fly around a bit. There we go. As things get in the way, including itself, it will not shoot me. So we're gonna have to tag all of our colliders. I just wanna go behind this asteroid. Here, it's just easier to move me. Bring them over. 
There we go. The line disappears because the asteroid is in the way. As soon as I'm out of the way of the asteroid, he can see me again. Okay, so all of the colliders need to be tagged as player. There we go. How does that work for the rest of them? I thought Unity used to go ahead and assign them all the same tag underneath. Maybe it doesn't anymore. Or maybe I'm just remembering wrong. Either way, um, I don't like doing it this way. I don't like having multiple things tagged as player like this. I don't want to get into compound colliders yet. Uh, we'll just go ahead and just tag everything as player. It works. It's just not the way I want to do it. In which case, this does not need to be player. It does not have a collider. Oh, it does have a box collider on it. Well, anything with a collider, we're going to have to make it a player this way. When we go ahead and put our own models in later, we won't need to do it this way. It won't, unless you're going to keep it built up with parts that you want to blow up. But anyway, let's go ahead. We'll start this up now. There we go. And we can see that the ray is clipping the front of us here. Let's drive around a bit. And let's keep an eye on our ship. All right, let's go back into the code and fix that up a bit. We're getting the red one. And we should get the message as well. Yep. So if I'm hitting the player, I'm going to draw a red one and I'm going to return true. There we go. I'm going to keep all my other debugs in for now. And I'm going to go ahead and form a new if statement up here. So if the player or our target, I guess I should say, is in front of us and we have line of sight, I want to do something. And we're going to go ahead and fire our lasers. But for now, we'll just go ahead and debug that out. And we'll do the firing of lasers in the next video. Say so fire lasers. All right, just one more quick look. Uh, so we got the ray cast hit. We're going ahead and figure out the direction we got to shoot, which is his position minus our position. Uh, we went ahead and took a look at debug dot draw ray to be able to draw a wave ray from point A to some other point out in the distance. Then we go ahead and cast that ray cast out from the tip of the laser, or I'm calling it the tip of the laser, even though it's the center of the laser. It's an empty game object, so it really doesn't take up any space anyway. But we're going to cast it out from its transform position, a certain direction. We're going to store what we hit. And this is the distance we shoot it at. Of course, whatever we hit, if it's called player or if it's tagged as player, I'm sorry. Then we're going to go ahead and draw that ray back out, which of course will be red. Then we're going to return true because, hey, we hit it. Else, go ahead and return false because we don't have line of sight. So one more quick check to see if all this works and we should be done. And when he has line of sight, it should say it here. Fire lasers. There we go. And if we just keep watching the numbers go up. Oh, let's go ahead and actually turn them. Well, no, let's do it without turning them back on. We'll take a look at it in just a second. So when I go behind this wall here, he no longer has line of sight. But of course, as soon as I pop back out, boom. So let's go ahead, we'll turn his movement back on. And let's watch it this way. Let me zoom out a bit. There we go. He's got the red laser going. There we go. I got behind the wall on him. So I might want to shorten the distance. Definitely increase the amount of asteroids. I can't have that many out here because I'm recording at the same time. But there we go. Line of sight is complete. So I'll go ahead and I'll see you in the next video. And that's when we're actually go ahead and start firing the lasers. Actually, well, let's just do it now. It's what one line of code. I'll come back into enemy attack. I want to come down to the bottom. Void. Fire lasers. Or just fire laser. There's only one. And this is going to work the exact same way that we had for the player input, where we just go ahead and 
call fire laser. And it doesn't hurt to go ahead and take a look at the laser script here. So we're going to go ahead and keep calling this fire laser. And the laser itself controls its reset timer and the displaying of anything else that we need on the screen. So it's all self-contained. So you can just come in and say laser dot fire laser. And I'm not passing in a position. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm actually having the laser go ahead and cast that ray and shoot. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a change in this one. And that's going ahead and taking a look at how we can overload this so that if we pass a, a position in, it'll go ahead and use that position. And if we don't, it'll go ahead and cast the ray and get the position that way. We could leave it this way, but I don't want to, you know, cast the ray going, yeah, we have line of sight and we know all the position and everything else and where we have to hit it. Then go ahead, pass it off to here, then have it do the exact same thing again. If we just pass that position in, then we can cast it. But I actually don't want to do that now. Let's say that for the next video. So I'll just go ahead, since I have the function made, we'll just go ahead and call it and I'm just going to move this there and then I'll end this and get to class before my students start to wonder where I am. There we go. And just to make sure there's no typos. I hate ending the video on a typo. All right. I got to get it here or this is going to go on forever. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>